Hello everyone, I'm Storm Tracker 18 meteorologist Austin Haskins. After several weeks of some rather dry weather with very minimal rainfall, that will change a little bit today as our next area of low pressure is going to be moving through. Now the main low is going to stay north of our area, but a warm front is bringing in our first round of some scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms for the first half of the day today. Then this cold front will bring in our second chance later this afternoon and in this evening. And that one does pose a risk for seeing some strong to severe storms. So we'll take you through that here coming up. So that first wave is going to be moving through here through about mid to late morning. By the early afternoon, we should get a little bit of a break in the action. Then after about 3 p.m. or so, we're going to be watching out in eastern and central Minnesota as that cold front gets closer for storms to initiate. And eventually, as it moves farther east, we'll see those storms kind of consolidate into either a solid line or kind of a broken line of storms as it progresses over to the east. And again, future cast is not going to look exactly like this as you'll see here, but the idea is that we will have some storms around during the evening hours. And by the time we get to about midnight or so, 11 p.m. midnight time frame, those storms should be well east of our area. And then heading into the overnight hours, we'll clear things out with likely some fog and spots tomorrow morning. That's one look at future cats. Here's another one. And again, we'll have that activity around through about early afternoon, the noon time frame. you know, give or take about an hour on each side with this first wave. Then as you see, we get a break and then you see more storms developing out in central and eastern Minnesota moving to the east as we head into the evening hours. And here's 530. You can see uh, numerous showers and storms around. And that'll continue, as I mentioned, through about 1030, 11 p.m. tonight and then things are going to quiet down overnight. The latest outlook from the Storm Prediction Center still maintains a level 2 out of 5 risk, but they have been pushing this farther to the east in their last few outlooks. So now basically all of the WQOW area is within this slight risk, with the exception of far eastern Taylor County, a sliver of eastern Clark and Jackson counties. And in later updates, there is the possibility, it's not a guarantee, they could definitely change this or maybe even parts of the area gets upgraded to maybe even a level three risk. So we'll keep you updated if that changes. But right now, as of this morning, uh, things are at a level two risk. So that means scattered severe thunderstorms are possible somewhere within that yellow shaded area. Now there is a threat for a few isolated tornadoes today. It's a little bit of a higher risk west of Eau Claire and then from Rice Lake, Chatek and areas west. A lot of what's going to happen initially is the storms will develop and be singular and the conditions are there for these to be supercell thunderstorms, which is where you get the potential for some isolated tornadoes and potentially large to even very large hail as you'll see here coming up. As the storms move farther east, they'll likely grow into a line, and that's where the wind threat's going to pick up, and also that tornado threat will still be there because you can sometimes get those little kinks in the lines with the rotation, and that's where you can get those brief spin-up tornadoes. So that's why the tornado risk is all the way over to Medford and Nielsville. The wind potential is medium across the entire area, and so is the hail risk, but I think it's going to be more of a medium to high risk with the hail because you see this hatched area here and you look on the legend, that means there could be some significant large hail, which by definition is two inches in diameter or larger. So some pretty large hail could be possible with some of the storms today. So the hazards that I'm looking at, again, a medium to high chance for hail, which could be upwards of two to maybe even two and a half inches in diameter, a medium threat for damaging wind gusts upwards of 60 to 70 miles per hour, and a low threat for isolated tornadoes. And again, I want to stress, not everyone is going to see severe storms this afternoon and tonight. Some cases, people might not even see thunderstorms at all. And if you do see severe weather, you're not going to see the worst type of severe weather. But what I'm showing you here, where it says up to two and a half inches or the wind up to 60 to 70 miles per hour, that just means the strongest storms could be capable, capable of producing that. So just kind of keep that in mind. And when you look at the hail sizes, for a storm to be severe, you need to have the hail at one inch in diameter, which is the size of a quarter. Now we're talking potentially hail up to egg size, which is two inches in diameter. Tennis ball size is two and a half inches in diameter. So we could be seeing uh, hailstones anywhere from maybe penny to nickel on the small side to maybe as large as golf balls or even maybe an isolated spot that could see hail that could be two inches in, in diameter or larger. And that is some pretty destructive hail. So something to kind of keep in mind if you have any vehicles outdoors, you may want to put them in the garage or find a safe place if you can to avoid 
uh, any major damage with that. So the key takeaways again, showers and storms around the morning round, widely scattered and non severe. The afternoon round, the timing roughly about 3 p.m. to midnight, you know, give or take about an hour leeway. In the Chippewa Valley in western Wisconsin, if you narrow that down a little bit more, you're looking at about 5 to 11 p.m. roughly. That's kind of what the timing is. But the severe weather potential, again, scattered severe thunderstorms possible. That's that level 2 risk. All hazards possible. Hail is the main threat, but could turn into a wind threat late. And as always, be sure to stay with us for updates on air, online, social media pages. And on the top left of the screen, you can download that free Storm Tracker 18 weather app as well to keep you updated with radar and weather alerts and other tools at your disposal for that. Now, very quickly, I want to talk about because we do dry out Friday into part of Saturday. There is going to be another chance for some rain showers, maybe an isolated storm or two between uh, the time from about Saturday night and into Monday night, kind of peaking a little bit Sunday and Monday. There's still some questions on how that will exactly play out. It looks like rain totals overall have diminished with that, so that's not some good news because we do need the rain. However, though, once we get this system for today out of here, we should have better clarity on how that will exactly play out. But certainly at least some rain is in the forecast, sometimes Saturday through Monday. But what is more certain and what's been more confident is we get rid of the 80s and replace them with temperatures back into the 60s to low 70s. But fall weather fans, don't get used to those 60s because you see Tuesday, Wednesday, we warm back into the mid, low to mid 70s and signs indicate towards the end of the month and the beginning of October, temperatures are going to remain above average.